for the most part, I've been doing this for um, many moons, and uh, I love, I love what your music is saying. Thanks, Makes, man. Thank you. Moves me on the inside, and that's really the only reason I'm talking because I just don't do very many of these anymore. Because thank it's, you very much, man. Thank you. Because it's a hard ass business, and I, I, there's a part of me that doesn't even want to tell you how much I really like the record, you know, because like, <laughs> bro, I totally understand, man. I wasn't even. Uh, planning on on doing this band man you know like i i was in a band um for 10 freaking years man and we did it we had record deals and did all you know tour the country and you know whatever and um i was just like man i didn't think that this is kind of how this was this is full of a bunch of fucking bullshit you know and then i kind of went and did something else it was doing um you know like spiritual type of music not really spiritual type of music but it was like sort of like sound healing kind of meditation type of music and it was so like fulfilling to have people that actually like listen to what's going on you know it's not like i'm sitting there at a fucking bar and everyone's there to get drunk i just happen to be playing there that night and if they hear something cool fine if not then fuck it they weren't there to see us in the first place they're gonna get right. fucked up yeah. you know where this was something where i was like wow you know, maybe I just need to like play music that I actually fucking give a shit about, you know, because yeah. the last band, it was so just cookie cutter, commercial, um, three and a half minute long songs, chorus in the beginning, mm -hmm. first chorus, verse chorus, bridge chorus, and here's the fucking, here it is real quick, and as quick as you would listen to it, that's as quick as you'd fucking forget about it, you yeah. know, and so... I don't know. I just got kind of burned out on it. And I had all the, these songs from this album, dude, um, from when I was already in that band because I was like unhappy with it. And so I was sitting there like writing these songs while we were in the studio out in Missouri a, a handful of years ago. I'm already working on these songs just for the fuck of it because, you know, I'm like, I just want to play some something that I'm capable of doing that feels just a little bit more fulfilling um, as an artist than like, all right, let's just play the game here and try and get a record deal and, you know, do this whole fucking thing. Um, and then, yeah, man, after I was at this academy thing uh, doing this meditation style music for a while, I was like, man, I really want to kind of approach the rock thing just with all this, a, a totally different dynamic and approach that I've kind of experienced over the last few years. And I just was like, you know, hit these guys up. I'm like, hey, uh, you just want to like, fuck around and I have these old songs like you guys want to just get in a room and try and bring them to life and see what happens and then boom there it was you know I was like fuck I was not planning on being in the business anymore and here we are Frank I guess it's interesting because I interviewed uh Rick Allen from Def Leppard right and oh shit and he went through this um I'll, say, I'll, I'll just call it a spiritual awakening I don't remember if that was his yeah. words or not but yeah. but he found he and he funded and founded this uh, spiritual healing with through drums right and uh -huh. so he has this sort of uh, Native American thing and it's just a beautiful right. thing and it's some something that is truly he found something that connected deeper than inside if that's a phrase uh -huh. and I and I was just so moved by that because it's like you know I mean I I, I don't I, I haven't found any redeeming value to pour some sugar on me right. Right, right. But this dude, he really believes. He meditates before each show, mm -hmm. and when he hits a drum beat, he wants that to spread and move as much positivity and spiritual and prayerness and all that kind of stuff. And I went, yeah. I mean, yeah. Man. Thank you for doing that, right? And I'm saying thank you for doing that. But what, did you come to some sort of weird crossroads in your life or something that you kind of went, I, I need more, or was it? Oh, I, oh man, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a long, elaborate story, man. You know, I, uh, I wound up getting really sick, um, and you know, people didn't know what was going on, um, and I literally had like chunks of hair, like you know, the size of a baseball, just completely out of my beard, out of you know, the back of my head, like not in a spot where like you would go bald and like hair would fall out. Like this was weird fucking shit. Like, you know, parts of my hair. And I remember waking up in my, um, my girlfriend's bed at the time this happened a handful of years ago. And I just wanted to scratch my head and I was like, what the fuck? You know, like, yeah. where's my hair? Anyway, long story short, um, no one knew what the hell was going on. Uh, 
it was like, we can inject you with some hormones and see what happens. We can give you a cortisone shot. And I'm like, you don't even know what's wrong with me and you want to inject me with shit. I'm cool. And um, my friend from a long time ago, she had um, gotten brain cancer. And she was told, you have six months to live. Basically, like, you're fucked. And you have an inoperable tumor the size of a grapefruit on her um, forehead. And she was like, nah, I'm not fucked. It's all good. I'll figure this out. And in six months, through shamanic healing and through alkalizing her body, um, basically trying to hold on to nutrients as effectively as possible and then expel waste as effectively as possible. And then as well as getting all of the frequency and energy in your energetic body balanced and aligned so your body can function as it should. And so in six months, when she was supposed to be dead, her cancer was gone. So I was like, okay, if she can get rid of cancer that way, then I can get rid of whatever it is that I have by following a similar path. So I went down that path, like literally was kicked down that path. Um, and I went through a bunch of training. You know, I learned all kinds of different energy work and sound therapy, um, shamanic stuff, uh, rate, you know, the list goes on of all these different modalities, but it's, it's very, uh, for me anyways, it, it's a very real, real thing, man, you know, because everything is energy. Everything is frequency vibrating at different densities, right? And so if you look at your body um, in that fashion, that there are different energy centers that vibrate at different frequencies that also correspond and govern different things in our lives, right? Like certain frequencies govern our survival, our instincts, our need for food or things to reproduce. And then other frequencies govern our emotions and, you know, our creativity and then other frequencies govern our will and our power and, you know, all these other things. And so I started getting into that and really trying to integrate music um, as medicine for a, for a while, you know, just being really mindful of the message that I'm saying, if I'm saying anything. Um, and just the frequency of the notes and everything is so important, man, because everything is frequency, you know, so... Um, I wound up healing myself, long story short, and uh, didn't have any sort of Western bullshit that I had to deal with, you know, which was pretty nice. I, I'm afraid that if I were faced up against that, I'm not sure what I would do still, right? Because mm -hmm. I want to I wanna envelop everything that you just said, and yet I'm afraid I would go to a Western doctor and yeah. I would go through some sort of, you know massive medicine morose thing right and i'm mm -hmm. like because i don't know who and what to believe it right it, and it's so hard it's i mean it's almost like you have to surrender yourself to what you gave yourself to absolutely and i don't, I don't know absolutely. if i could do it i mean i think i could do it but it would almost be like okay all the medicine hasn't worked now i'm gonna try it rather right. than you trying it like almost with your first step right right exactly and you know i i feel like that kind of tends to happen with most people, you know, because it's kind of like our default, you know, I mean, Western medicine is off the fucking hook, bro. I mean, like we have things dialed down here and we also don't have certain things dialed down here, you know, where it's like in Western medicine, Hey, sorry, can't help you. You're going to die in six months. You got cancer. If you don't got the dough, we ain't got the fix for you, you know? And so other style medicine, you know, wound up saving this girl's life and wound up healing me and doing other things. And I think it's just different things for different things, you know, where it's like if I had, you know, gotten cancer or again, I, I don't know, because my homegirl, she had brain cancer. So, right. um, you know, but it's different, man. It's different. I, I think that I would do the same thing, which is what I did. I was like, fuck, you know, hit up the doctor, see what the hell is going on. And then it wasn't until... Hey, we can't do anything for you where I was like, uh, anyone? Like, what should I do, you know? And then um, I asked for it, and then I got it. And I had to go on this massive, uh, just intense journey, bro. Like, I, I wound up, you know, leaving the band, um, broke up with my fiancé at the time. Uh, most of the friends I was hanging out with, was no, I was no longer hanging out with because it was like I could no longer – correspond with certain energies like it was like the energy and the frequency that i was 
corresponding with it. I was writing at that point in time. I got ill from that. Like I got sick from that. So I, things needed to change, you know, and as I made the decision to change um, the people and the events and circumstances in my life, everything fucking changed. And it was crazy, man. It was crazy, but um, it was cool. It was very cool. Well, so, so you're saying that everything that, that brought you to that place of dis-ease or disease, whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. was the imbalance that was going on in your life in all facets. Absolutely. Right. So Absolutely. when you decide to make that big 180 degree or 360 degree turn, I never know what it is. <laughs> so <laughs> when, you, when you decided to make that turn, was that a lonely place to go to? Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. You, it's, it was, I was just so grateful, man, that, you know, even, yes, absolutely. I'll, I'll just throw that out, an extremely lonely place. And I mean, it still kind of is, you know, it still kind of is because it's not like I had just decided to hop off the path, you know, it's right. like, I just go about my path with a different perspective now, you know, but being kind of more, feeling more whole, uh, holy, whole-ish, whatever, it's just kind of like I, I don't know, man, you know, there's certain things that I just don't uh, desire, you know, there's certain things that I don't feel like I need like I used to, you know, I'm okay with being alone, I'm okay with walking alone and um, doing my own thing, and you know, like the more I'm okay with that, the more the right people like come into my life. You know, it's like that there's that space for the right corresponding people to kind of come in and, and, you know, there's been a handful of people that I have, uh, um, that are still in my life, but most of them, you know, aren't. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was lonely, bro. It was. Cause I wonder too, if, if, I mean, I feel like we're all drug addicts in a weird way, but, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, and I don't mean drugs per se, but we're addicts to something of, of this world, right? So, so if do people come to you and go, Dino, I, I, you are so far gone. You are fruitcake land. I mean, you are. <laughs> you, nobody ever gets healed this way. You're you're putting all your eggs in this frico basket, right? And come back over here. You know, what I mean right. that sort of don't, don't, don't lose yourself because we don't want to lose you. I mean, every, every little thing that they can pull and tug on your heart, right. you know? Right. They, um, they were doing that. I mean, it, it happens, you know, I don't, I, it happens like, absolutely. You know, things, certain things that, you know, people don't understand, they're uncomfortable about it. You know, a lot of people aren't, you know, some people are open to it. Some people are subconsciously seeking shit like that. You know, they don't know what it is, but it could be something you bring up the law of attraction or you say the word energy or, or something like that and it triggers something as a familiarity in somebody that they're like, hey, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but I kind of like it, you know? And then there are the others where it is almost like, I, it, I don't want to say it scares them, but essentially it's like, if it's either love or fear, you know? And if it's not in full acceptance and understanding or wanting to understand, then there's some subconscious shit in there, fear, their lack of understanding, it scares them. They, you know, maybe they're attached to an idea or a belief system that this could potentially challenge that, the thought of energy and frequencies and the fact that you do have free will and you are responsible for your emotions. And, you know, basically it's throwing the ball in your court, you know, and some people are, um, it scares people sometimes, you know? And yeah. so, yeah, a lot of people are like, dude, you're fucking tinfoil hat. Uh, you know, what the hell is wrong with you? You've done lost your shit, you know, but I had just not let that get to me. You know, I'm like, look, perceive me however you want, but I just want my own energy, my own frequency, my own actions and the things that occur in my life to just speak for themselves. And it's like, hey, man, if I'm full of shit, if I'm completely fucking nuts, then the things in my life should reflect that. You know, and I don't feel like they really are right now. I think things for me in the physical realm are going fairly well right now. I'm pretty happy. So do you think would you think when you talk to people or say these things that it's weird coming from a guy who looks like you and does what you do for a living rather than Dr. Phil on TV or something like that? You know what I mean by that? <laughs> Because yeah. you're never going to hear that. I mean, you might hear some, like, it's almost like the person that's way out there, they'll have on for five minutes because 
it's such a non comfortable place for people to be. Right. Right. But because but if somebody like Dr. Phil embraced it ever, right? Because I've I've read decent amount of books about this sort of idea and ideas uh-huh. and ideals. Right, right. You know, that they don't I mean, I just wonder if when it comes from somebody who looks like you rather than Dr. Phil, if that's uh if you get uh pushed away faster just because just because of that, I guess. Because of that. Because, yeah, I mean, people are are naturally, you know, judgmental. You know, they're like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, but what I have experienced, man, in, in my time, which, you know, when I had left the, my last band and went on this whole healing journey and I, I wound up at this um, spiritual academy um, called Clarity Academy of Spiritual Arts and we did, you know, seminars and workshops and you know we could give people bachelors and phds and all this shit and i was the music director there and did music and i was in all the classes and all the seminars and you know certified and licensed in a bunch of different shit um that i do outside of music um but i found that a lot of people that are into that you know that are middle age, my age, middle age, older, you know, that were grew up in a church and then kind of like veered more onto the spiritual path. And, you know, they're just open to new ideas. Um, I found that it was they were like oddly receptive to it. They were Hmm. oddly receptive to it and supportive of it. And like, wow, it's really cool that somebody like you is bringing this kind of thing into the trenches of fucking rock and roll you know and i mean even for me man you know it, it's hard sometimes you know i tell my band i tell all everyone you know it's like fuck man sometimes going um into these collective energies some certain venues you know where people are going to to drink and party and you know there's sometimes there's a lot of darkness that gets brought into these places you know and being um, empathetic, being an empath. It's like sometimes I walk into certain places and I'm like, oh my God, like I can't even fucking breathe. Like instantly I'm like, I need to get fucked up right now if I'm going to remain here for the rest of the night. Otherwise, I'm just going to have a fucking panic attack and run the fuck out of this place. You know? Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's it's all it's all interesting stuff. But yeah, I felt that people have been oddly kind of receptive to it. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I- I, I was just thinking about because when I've walked into clubs, I mean, I, w- I was thinking one of the first things you're talking about is we're you know just a band and everybody here is all messed up and I'm going like, but I mean I've talked to club owners and it's like they could care less who's on stage. They just need to sell X amount of alcohol. So in essence, right. that's why you're there, right? To get people right. in the door to buy alcohol. So they're gonna break even or lose money on you, mm-hmm. and voila, the bar tab was X, you know, and they know and they know what bands sell. Right. Exactly. You know, exactly, man. Exactly. It's, and, and that's a sort of weird, I don't know if it's a darkness. I guess it is a darkness. It's a darkness to me, I guess I should say, uh-huh. you know, that to think that that is the main motivator of what I would hope you're stepping on stage to shine all this light. Right. You know, so. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, you know, and that's kind of like, that's just kind of the game you play, you know, it, it's like, I go in there and do what I'm doing and I'm just grateful that it's like, you know, for 45 minutes or whatever, it's like, I have a microphone, you know, and it's like, be mindful of what you're going to fucking say into that microphone. And even though sometimes, man, I am like, from one day to the next, I'm like, fuck, dude, I don't even know what's going on. I'll go so inward, dude. Like, it's hard for me not sometimes to not have my fucking eyes closed the whole set because i'm it's like this like the song is coming through me Mm -hmm. i'm just like this vessel that is it's coming through me but the fact that like you know if i'm sitting there thinking and trying to do a certain thing and i'm in my head about it it is like a train wreck it's bad news you know i i don't know it's singing's weird dude it's fucking weird because i used to play guitar man i've been playing guitar for 25 years i was a guitar player in a band you know since i was 15 years old and then all of a sudden it's like now you're a singer and i'm like fuck this is kind of crazy a little bit you know but <laughs> so do i yeah. do i know any of the bands that you were in uh i wasn't i was just no probably not i was in a band um called track fighter yeah. uh we were just you know local around sacramento we toured around the country we played with you know a bunch of huge bands and stuff but 
um, we never really like broke through. You know, we had um, before Sage has started, we got a record deal under you know a Warner Brothers label. We were like, all right, dude, what's, this shit's gonna happen. We're down. And uh, dude, we waited around for well over a year for a budget to come through. And I'm just like, there's a lot of downtime to really kind of contemplate and sit there and mm. like, okay, what am I doing with my fucking life right now? I'm sitting here waiting for this shit. You know, this guy who's done X amount of shit and has X amount of Billboard Awards and Grammys and all this stuff and is making all these promises. And, you know, the last four bands he's had have been big mega successes. And it's like, OK, cool, we're going to do it. And then we experience this thing. And I'm like, oh, OK, I think I understand now why so many bands fucking break up. It's like, dude, you guys made it so far. Like what happened? You know, like you were right there. What happened? You know? And it's like, oh, I totally get it now. You know, yeah. it's shit like that. Um, yeah. Interesting stuff, dude. So, so I want to talk about songs for sure, dude. Yeah. I, yeah. I'll say one more thing, but it could turn into 15 more things. Sure. But, so you're on the road with all these quote unquote, big bands, big artists, whatever, mm-hmm. anything that you learn from them or anything that you found there, uh, way of being able to cope with this sort of world that can be exactly how you described it, a place where you go where everybody's just getting wasted and trying to escape from this world in some some, in some way, way or another, it. right? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, not really. I did. I, what I learned was is that a lot of them are very similar. You know, like a lot of them are just going through the same shit, man. And I, I, I learned that, you know, even though we were in a, in a, an RV, it was like a decent RV or even the next time around when we were in a van or whatever it is, it's like, we're talking to the bands that are sitting there, you know, in these 50 foot buses and they're just telling us the same shit, man. We're playing the same stage for the same amount of people dealing with the same fucking promoters, the same bullshit. Everything is the same except they're making more money. Yep. We're making less money. And in any regard, it's like, I don't know, man. I, I just, it, it kind of helped me like realize like, you know, we're not alone in in sort of the perspective that we have on things. And and I just want to say, you know, I don't want to make, I didn't want to make it sound like, you know, the whole thing is super dark and all that stuff. Yeah, but I, know. I mean, you know, but it is, man. I mean, it, it, to a degree, it's like, yeah, sometimes it's there's a bunch of fucking sex, drugs, and rock and roll, man, and it's like that leads you down to results of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You're hungover all the time. There's fucking drama. Uh, your health is fucked. Mm. Um, you know it, but it's fun. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. It's a balance. You know. Yeah, I think I guess what I've found after all the thousand plus interviews I've done, most of them in person, uh-huh. but uh, I, I just thought. For the most part, we're all working hard to make a living, right? You know, absolutely. That's what it, that's what it felt like to me. I mean, certainly there are people who want to shine light, like I think you're trying to do here, mm-hmm. but and there are other people that I thought were trying to shine light, and they would just sort of go, "That you're reading way too much into it." But I, I was still convinced that they had to do that for part of their marketing, right? They couldn't uh-huh. be, they couldn't, they couldn't bring out the word spiritual or something like that because that would throw them into a whole other uh, right. arena right. of. Who knows what their who knows what right. their manager is concerned about, you know? So right, right, right. So absolutely. So anyway, it's and I and I honestly, I still felt goodness from most of them, right? I mean, rarely did I get to an artist and thought you you really don't care about anybody else but yourself. I never, I rarely got to a, a person like that because for the most right. part, I think people do want to spread light. I do think they want to do good, for lack of a better phrase, too. you know. Absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, that's that's the whole thing. I think that de- deep down, you know, underneath all the fucking bullshit, man, you know, people just want to be loved and people just want to feel safe, you know, and by safe, I mean, I can say anything to this person and trust them with every ounce in my body. I can go here and feel safe. I can be with this group of people and feel safe. I can feel safe like a child felt safe with its parents like everything's okay like i'm taken care of i'm supported and as adults you know as we grow up sometimes people forget that you know there's a lot of life bullshit and and you know it's turns into this subconscious thing where it's like 
there is little amounts of fear that are kind of driving our behavior and driving our actions, you know, and it's like sometimes we forget how to be childlike and just feel safe, you know, and I feel like that everyone, you said, wants that, you know, and we go through life and react to things and respond to things and, you know, we each get there um, some way, somehow, but I think we'll, we're all going to get to the same place eventually, bro, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that too. I really do. And it, and, and part of me thinks that's, uh, I, I've thought about my own path and talking about God with other people and stuff in my perception of what God is and mm-hmm. stuff. And I, and I, and I hear this sort of like thing, well, they, they were saved under deathbed and something. And I'd always go, that's not fair, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, but maybe that's the way it was for them. Right. I mean, you can leave this dark, crappy life and all of a sudden maybe there is light right at the end of your life and you realize it. Maybe pe- some people don't ever realize it. And there is some sort of hell that you end up in or whatever after life. And I don't know what it is. All I know is uh-huh. that if I can just live my life the best I can here while I'm here, I don't know what else to do because I don't really have control afterwards. Exactly. You know, so that's exactly. all I can really do, you know. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter, you know, because <laughs> I mean, not to sound like super cliche, but the only thing that does matter is right now. You know, anything that has happened in the past has happened in the present moment. Anything that's happening now is happening. Anything that's going to happen in the future is going to happen in the present moment of the future. The only thing that matters is now, man, and everything else is just kind of speculation. Yeah. You know, so I, I agree with what you were Good. saying. I only want to get to a point in each question where you agree with what I'm saying. So, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Perfect. So we got there. So I'm done with that question. No. So I. So the record. I mean, I. I don't know why. I guess the first track is what hit me upside the head because there's many times when my wife and I look at each other and go, "What the hell." And so, and so, <laughs> right. literally for that title, I went, "Yeah, I'm going to check out this record," and that, and that's why I've I'm just so happy because who knows what moves us to to investigate, right? Ooh. So perfect, but right, that song's right. exactly. specifically about yeah, looking out into the world and it's just so messed up. I it, yeah, so talk to me when when you wrote that and or because to me I don't know you said you wrote this right. stuff a while ago, but I'm like, dude, you could have written this yesterday. Yeah. Dude, you know, thank you, Frank. Thank you. You know, and I, I honestly, I think that's why it's coming out now, you know, because it's been sitting there in my computer for years, bro, for years, like literally. And I guess, you know, it's like, whatever, man, timing is everything. It's coming out now. And maybe that's just kind of <laughs> what needed to happen. You know? So are you writing know. to the whole world here? Or are you just looking at the world and going, yeah, you know? Yeah. I, I what mean, the hell rather than WTF? Yeah. At that point, um, at that point, with that specific song, um, it was kind of just, I was involved in watching a lot of the news, right? And the quote news. Uh, and Yeah, right. The thing that sucks your soul completely. Exactly. You know, and even though that I knew, at least I believed, that a lot of what I'm seeing is just, I'm like, man... It sure seems like there is an agenda here to just get people to fucking react to things. And all I'm seeing is just negative reactions and and all this sort of shit. And I'm like, dude, I know that this isn't all that's going on in the world. Because, I mean, as as much bullshit as as we're told and, and see that is going on here, there's a lot of great things happening you know people are awakening we're talking and having conversations like this you know it's like there the things are happening you know it's just kind of what do we want to focus on you know and at that time i just noticed that it seemed like the collective focus was on this negative sort of thing and i was like man what the hell like literally that was what came to my head i'm like i'm going to call the song what the hell because what the hell you know and um I just started writing um, accordingly, man, you know, and just trying to kind of lift a, a dark situation, you know, because it's just, I don't know, tired of the damn darkness. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. 